I'm delighted to be here today with Paul Madal. I'd like to introduce you to Paul Madal. Paul Madal is a psychologist, a very well known um, international psychologist. He's director of the Listening Centre in Toronto and the creator of the LIFT program. So it's great to see you again, Paul, and lovely to, I'm really looking forward to talking to you more and building on the original conversation that we had, uh, which is on our openingyourmind.com uh, channel for people who want to see that. So yeah, so how's everything with you, Paul? Everything's fine, you know, Good. considering, considering yes. that we're still uh, kind of confined and, uh, yeah. but no, we are, we are fine. And what about you? Yes, good, good. Look, it's unusual times, isn't it? And, um, and, and interesting times, I suppose, in terms of what we do, uh, in terms of using the sound therapy, the listening therapy with children. Um, so I suppose what I wanted to start off really is by asking you, I mean, you're a psychologist with, with many years experience. And I suppose as a psychologist with so much experience, what led you to start to use the sound therapy or the listening therapy? Before I start, I want to introduce Rosalind Pesino, who is going to be part Hi. of this one. Hi, uh, Rosalind. She's, How are you? She, she's going to be there to, to be sure that everything works. Okay, great. And also, uh, will be part of some of the uh, later in the interview, uh -huh. uh, in the conversation, because she has uh, she knows she knows the work very well. She's we are working very closely, and it's teamwork. Absolutely. And Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's what I should have said that you, you very much got a team there at the listening center in Toronto so it's lovely to have you as well Rosalind um, so yes yeah, so tell us Paul as a psychologist what what led you to start to use sound therapy well the use of sound therapy started much earlier than be a psychologist in fact it is the use of sound therapy which brought me to become a psychologist. Uh, and I would say, be, become a psychologist on paper, you know, by going to university and learn the field. Mm -hmm. uh, but in fact, it is what happened before in my life, before, during, and after some therapies that I benefited from, that may be the psychologist that I am because I think, you know, the word psychologist means a lot. I think I have a certain vision of what psychology is based on the work I do. And I think, and that's not new for many psychologists and for many people who are in the helping field, yes. is that uh, we go in that field in the beginning because, and we are attracted by, that field, by this field because we are trying to help ourselves. And what happened to me is that for the 18 first years of my life, I was very learning disabled uh, in the sense that I, I could read and write. I had a diagnosis of dyslexia, which is, was a popular diagnosis of that time. But, uh, you know, over, if I had been diagnosed at other time and in other place, I would have been given uh, diagnosis of certainly ADD, uh, perhaps not H because I was not a jumpy type, but ADD, the diagnosis of auditory processing disorder, I mean all those sophisticated words that we are using now to say that we are not doing well or as well as we could, as well as, uh, as, well as our potential will allow us to, to, to be. And one of the first things that I learned, uh, and, and which influenced me a lot as a psychologist, is that one of the big problems of children who have a learning disability, or learning difficulty, or language difficulty, or communication difficulty, is that they have a vision of themselves which do not fit what they are able to transmit to others, which means that there is a disconnect and an ongoing frustration and with all those things which can come with it, you know, inhibition, anger, uh, frustration. Frustration, exactly. Because I see myself being that, 
but that's not what I show to people. That's not what I show to teachers. That's not what I can do to satisfy my parents who are always uh, worried about me, disappointed by my marks, uh, etc., etc. This is really, and particularly when you reach the early stage of teenage and adolescence, this learning problem, dif difficulty with reading, writing, or expressing yourself becomes really with the developing of what is called ego of, of yourself, mm -hmm. the sense of yourself, it becomes a, what I call an existential problem. Who am I? Yeah. Uh, uh, what am I going to do? What's, uh, and, and, and which means that there is kind of an infection mm -hmm. of a problem mm -hmm. which goes much, much beyond the world of the classroom. Mm -hmm. It becomes everywhere. The way I've, I've always sensed the what is being learning disabled, particularly when you have a difficulty with language associated with it, is like being a foreigner mm -hmm. in your own language, in your own country, with your own family, and I even would say within yourself. Yes. You're disconnected. Yeah. Uh, and the cell therapy that I uh, well, it, it come to uh, benefited from. Uh, happened when I was 18 years old. I met and uh, you know I've written about it and so on. I'm not going to go into the detail. French medical ENT specialist called Dr. Alfred Tomatis, mm -hmm. who helped me through his sound therapy program. Uh, and we are talking about the late 60s here. Right? We're talking about a long time ago, but who helped me to basically facilitate the learning process to a point that I quite rapidly went back to school. I, I was a school dropout, dropout at the time I met him. Went back to school, succeeded the baccalaureate two years after, and went to university to study psychology. And I studied psychology with one purpose only, was to do what I'm still doing today, meaning apply this form of sound therapy and develop it and making it more readily available, which is what the lift come to the picture. Uh, all over, uh, I worked in Africa, in South Africa, after having worked in Europe, mm -hmm. and then I come to North America through Canada, and I've been staying here, but from Canada, moved to the States, mm -hmm. Mexico, and other country of, of Latin America. Mm -hmm. That was my goal, for to get this work out there because it's so interesting, it's so important, it makes so much sense. <laughs> no, no, I, I agree with everything you're saying and it, it's so, so true, isn't it? I mean, this work is so important. Um, you know, I'm a speech therapist with over 20 years experience and when I introduced the sound therapy, it was like the difference between day and night. You know, we'd been able to achieve a little bit with speech therapy, and then adding in the sound therapy was like the children just took off. So I, I completely understand, you know, what you're saying. And, and I can understand it from the other way around yeah. because before yeah. I did this, 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 the, the sound therapy, I was doing also the French equivalent of speech therapy, which was called orthophony, and it it, it it was frustrating for not just for me but for the therapist because it was not working. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's the, that's the problem, isn't it? It's, in my experience, it's scratching the surface. But with the sound therapy, like the LIFT program, you're getting into the child's nervous system or the adult's nervous system in a very different way. So that's, that's what I wanted to ask you about, Paul. You've, you've all this experience. As you say, it, it was your own life experience and your own difficulties, which so many of us have experienced, that brought you to this work. That, that you want to then, I suppose, really get this to so many people on a worldwide level. Um, you've, you've mentioned many different diagnoses there from specific learning difficulty. And I think this will, this will resonate with a lot of parents because they're thinking, golly, is this something for my child? So you've mentioned specific learning difficulties, ADD, ADHD, auditory processing disorder, speech and language difficulties. So, who are the clients that you feel benefit the most from sound therapy? Really, all of the above. Yeah. Uh, it's, the thing is that 
we have all those diagnoses, and I will add to the list uh, uh, nonverbal learning disability. We know the people who have not difficulty with speech and language, mm -hmm. but those kind of kids who talk at you and not to you, you know, yes. the meetings, yes. social cues, and so on. That's another category. Uh, uh, also, uh, all the problems which have to do with development, slow, particularly slow development, delayed develop, de what we call developmental delay, global developmental delay, mm -hmm. are very good candidate to the sound therapy, uh, as well as problem having to do with relating to others, mm -hmm. which of course on top of that, uh, of, of, of that list, being the autistic spectrum disorder with all its form mm -hmm. and all its level of severity. Uh, this is what the program seems to work the best with all of the above. Now, of course, because we are stimulating the ear, the auditory system, mm -hmm. children who are going to re react the best are those who tend to be more, what I would call, receptive listening or receptive auditory type of difficulty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and as a result, affecting the expressive. Mm -hmm. I do not express myself very well as an orally or in writing because I do not receive, for a reason or another, I do not receive the information mm -hmm. loud and clear, yes. crystal clear. Yes. And if we can work on the receptive, uh, which means that those who respond the best or respond the fastest, Mm -hmm. For the first type of response mm -hmm. we get when we help a child is mm -hmm. going to be that receptive part. Yes. The, the, uh, pay more attention, uh, is more focus, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, do, do, not, uh, do, do not misinterpret messages as much, can receive multiple instruction uh, easier, is not as disturbed by the background noise in the classroom. This is really, I think, the, 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 those who react the best yes. or, or the, fast, the fastest thing. The, the, the reading, writing, uh, you know, it's like going to other layers. Mm -hmm. When you open a tank, it's yes. gonna, uh, uh, the water is gonna pour into the other one, into the other one, into the other yes. one. Yes. And the, the, the reading and then the writing or the, the speech, which means expressive, comes after the receptive. Yes. That is the logic of the work with which we work. Now, I'm going to say, uh, and, and when, when it comes to children in the spectrum, very, very often, we are not going to get the child out of the spectrum. In fact, we have to wonder if the child really wants to be out of the spectrum. There are a lot of people who live a good life yes. with uh, the little quirks and quirks mm -hmm. and, and, uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, which, of course, we call that the shadow symptoms, you know, like a shadow syndrome. I mean, they, they are a little bit, but it doesn't prevent them to be uh, to, to, to be operational, socially, professionally, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. to contribute to society, if you want. Yeah. There are many of those. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which means, but some of them are disabled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. They are disabled as a, because they have such a social difficulty or such a learning difficulty mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is that they, 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 they are not able to, 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 to basically to contribute, to be part of. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which means that in the case of autism, we, uh, autism, autistic spectrum, mm -hmm. I cannot say we resolve the problem of autism, but we make the child more receptive, yeah. more open, yeah. more ready to receive the information. Mm -hmm. Uh, that is phenomenally important when it comes to these children. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Another, uh, another field in which I think we work very, very well, and we will talk later mm -hmm. about, uh, about those children, as a global developmental delay. As long as they are taken early, Mm -hmm. There is a lot that sound stimulation, sound, mm -hmm. we are beyond listening here. Mm -hmm. Sound is energy, is electricity, mm -hmm. uh, neurochemical 
electricity that you send to the brain which energizes it and this energy is going to be transferred to not just the mind mm -hmm. or the emotion but the body as well and we will talk because i think that is a very important aspect of the work that we are doing mm -hmm. i mean it really impacts you know when when you describe all of that paul it can impact on so many different you know, groups of children, if you want, uh, children who have a diagnosis, as you say, of ADD, auditory processing disorder, global developmental delay, children who are on the spectrum, but also children who may not even have a diagnosis, but are experiencing challenges in terms of their development, whether it be motor-wise, listening-wise, language-wise, speech and language-wise. It really covers the whole spectrum, doesn't it? It's, it's, it's right across the board. It's interesting, you know, I'm just thinking, I know over the years you've developed the listening checklist, Paul, and that, is that a way of identifying who will benefit the most? Is it something for parents to look at to see if there are specific areas there? Why did you develop the listening checklist and what does it show you? Well, this checklist, I think it's, you, you, just, uh, you just said it. it. I think it's a good exercise of awareness for parents. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sometimes they have an idea, but when you put in front of them a few questions, it's, they start to, when you put, when you materialize a thought with words, mm -hmm. it becomes clear. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, which means that it's first that for the parents. Mm -hmm. The second, uh, the, 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 the other part of the checklist is that it quickly gives us an idea if the child is a candidate and to what, uh, 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 what, what level is a candidate. If, for example, we have a lot in the receptive skills and expressive skills. Mm -hmm. uh, we know, we know that it's a candidate. If we have very little on the receptive skills, a lot in the expressive, Mm -hmm. A child who listen very well, who yes. process information very well, but how, how, how cannot speak, mm -hmm. then we know that there is a motor component over and above the sensory one, the, yes. the sensory or the receptive one, the, mm -hmm. the listening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean we cannot do anything. In fact, yesterday we saw a child like that. Uh, uh, we, we, with Rosie, we saw a child like that. He, he has much more on the expressive than the receptive, mm -hmm. but we know better because the, the, you know, theoretically it means that there is perhaps not very much we can give him. Well, there is. Why? One, because he is very young yeah. and there is a lot which can be done at that time, mm -hmm. but it also means in our recommendation to the parents is that the list, in, in a case, for example, there is both receptive and expressive, mm -hmm. that, and with a lot of expressive is that, yes, listening, we have to do it, but be ready for speech therapy, for other form of therapy afterward. Yes. A child who is in a coordination, like a, a, mm -hmm. with, mm -hmm. with motor issue, but also with receptive, and mm -hmm. well, you know that OT is going to be a recommendation more than if the problem is just, mm -hmm. ju I would say just, because it's, it's unusual that it's just yeah. receptive, and doesn't really affect the expressive side. Mm -hmm. and that, that is a kind of thing that daily, because we receive through the internet, uh, to, through a website every morning, we have people mm -hmm. approaching us mm -hmm. and they complete this checklist. And based on the completion of this checklist, we are going to send them mm -hmm. an email to tell them what we think we can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, that's fascinating. And I think for any parent who's wondering, um, you know, is their child appropriate? Obviously, we're talking about who's appropriate today. And we're going to be talking a little bit later about specific children and adults that you've worked with and, you know, what they presented with and how they progressed and all of that. But if parents want to have a look at the listening checklist, it is on your website as well, which I think is listeningtherapycenter.com. It's listening center. center. Sorry, sorry, yeah. It's center with a uh, T R E. It's a Canadian way. Okay, okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, no, that's great. And um, I suppose with all of that, mind you've hit on an important point there as well. I think, as you say, Paul, you know, it's not that the lift is the answer to everything or sound therapy is the answer to everything, but it's an important piece of the jigsaw that can, and we've said this so many times, that can open the door 
in terms of skills emerging neurologically and from a neuroplasticity point of view that then puts the child in a better place to uh, develop uh, or gain from speech therapy or opens the door so that they can attend speech therapy, that they can be calm enough, listening well enough, processing in a better way, all of that, or from an OT point of view, an occupational therapy point of view, or, or whatever it is. So it, it can not only develop a child's skills or an adult's skills, but opens the door to others getting involved who may be necessary as well and i think that's that's an important piece isn't it yeah, yes and it's important but it's also important to uh, particularly for clarity for parents yeah. to, try to establish a certain order in yeah. what has to be done first yes i think what has to be done first particularly with children with allergies and so on is to clear that part yeah, okay absolutely. we see a child who arrive with big uh, uh, Dark circles. Yes, yes, and uh, yes. nose and so on. Let's let's yeah. go and let's be sure that there is not a overgrown uh, uh, tonsils. Uh, that to, look at all this. Okay, so yes. let's let the medical, the physical, the physical and the dietary. Okay, clear up the system. Yeah. Then, then there is the preparation to the ground. Mm -hmm. So the preparation, like if you are working on on a play-doh yes. uh, and the play-doh has not been touched for a few days you are going to yeah. you, you are going to work on the play-doh and then you are going to shape it the way you want mm -hmm. the listening the listening the lift uh, program is about working the play-doh yeah yeah absolutely. the work of the speech therapy the teachers the OT is going to be giving the shape mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now that the system is flexible, is malleable. Yes, yes. No, absolutely. And I suppose the way I would look at it as well is it's, like you said, that the biomed, allergies, intolerances, toxicity in the system, that needs to be sorted out first. Right. That's, that's a primary, you know, physical wellness piece. Once that's in place, then the next step in terms of the foundation is, in my experience, the sound therapy because then you're planting the seeds for things to grow, for things to develop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, and then you build from there, okay. Just in case we forget, I'm sure yeah. it is your question, but yeah. it, it, for me, it's so important. Yeah. It's what makes sound therapy unique. What makes sound therapy unique is that you do not ask anything to the child other than wearing headphones yeah. and enjoy the hour or so two hours that's all that you ask and you are working Absolutely. on his reading ability spelling all those things that he doesn't even want to talk about particularly yeah. when you reach the stage of a teenage and adolescent mm -hmm. they don't want to talk about that thing. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. the first thing they want to do is to put it aside of their mind and think about something else and go and yeah. play out play or listen yeah. to the music but not that one yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which means that there is a very important work to do in preparing yeah. the child. It's, mm -hmm. If you're going to go to play, we like to take children in the summertime mm -hmm. and make it sound like it's going to be like a summer camp around, around headphone and music, and it's going to be fun. And, you're going to, yeah. and children completely forget the reason why they come. Yes. And then we start working. We start talking business, like asking them to read out loud and so on. But they already have done a lot of preparing of the ground. And even when you prepare the, the way we present the reading, is not we are not going to emphasize on the word reading. We are going to emphasize of telling stories to other, like we, we emphasize the oral, the expressing orally. And it just happened that it's, it is on a piece of paper that you have to decode. But we don't put too much emphasis on that. Yeah, yeah. No, and that's the beauty of it, isn't it? It's so non-invasive. It's And as you said in our last kind of discussion, you said you're not asking the child to do more of what they're already struggling with. You're Absolutely. not asking them to do more of what's already difficult because they're trying to kind of, they want to park that, particularly the teenagers. They don't want to talk about that, as you say. Mm -hmm. They want to think about something else, something positive, something, you know, that's going to change things for them. So that's that's the beauty as you say it's just a matter of putting the headphones on and then yes. yeah and then the program starts to work and the center looks like a playground 
Yeah. We were out of our way to remove the school aspect of it because uh, yesterday we saw a child start grade one this year. He already say I hate school. Yes. Yeah, you don't need to be an adolescent to hate no, school. No, you start right from the start and that put an imprint. Yeah. That has to be taken out if you want the child to be receptive. Yeah, absolutely. And being receptive, being a listener, mm -hmm. is not just having a system which works, mm -hmm. but it's having a, a wanting to absorb. Yes. A will for, yes. and we want to regain this will when it has been lost. Yes, 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 absolutely. Okay, so tell me, Paul, I know you have worked with so many children and adults over the years, and, and I have to ask, I know I mentioned this to you before we started today, um, you have a beautiful picture behind you, and you know, and I started asking about it. And you were telling me it was a client that you had worked with. I'd love, I'd love you to share that with families because I think it's such a, a great story. Well, yes. We w before we start talking about this this, this picture, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna bring in, you know, I'm gonna ask uh, Roslyn to great, great. Part of Thank you. Yes. Uh, um, <laughs> there we are. Right there. <laughs> and we still see the picture in the background. Okay, yeah. that's great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, tell us, yeah. This is someone that I have known now for, um, I think this painting dated from 1986 or 87, 88, you know, that time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When I came to Toronto, well, no, it's not when I came to Toronto, I, it just happened that I was in contact with a restaurant okay. Uh, okay. and in that restaurant was a waiter mm -hmm. who was extraordinarily entertaining, yes. firm, like we're putting a show in a, such a, such a elegant and, uh, and uh, fun way for uh -huh. people that the restaurant was crowded every night to, just to come and see Robin. I mean, he was just a, an incredible entertainer. Now, one day we put him in front of a, a, a camera uh, uh -huh. to, to say a few words and yeah. he didn't have anything to say. <laughs> if you remove the element of spontaneity, yes. you were totally, totally lost. Yes. Which, uh, that's an aside on him, mm -hmm. was part of his mm -hmm. personality. But one day, one day we were talking, uh, uh, Robin knew my history, and he told me, you know, Paul, some things that I've never been able to resolve in my life is writing. I can't write. Mm -hmm. And I would like to write. And I could see that he's someone is a storyteller. And yes. so on. I can see yes. really that he had things to say. And I said, okay, let's start with a program. I, I, he told me something that I didn't know, but he was already going to see a tutor for uh, spending a lot of money, hours after hours. Mm -hmm. learning how to write and it didn't work mm -hmm. and the guy was in his mid-30s mm -hmm. and really kind of it was really a big problem for him okay. and we started the program and he started you know improving writing uh, yes but you know I have to be honest not writing at the level where he wanted to write i mean he was 35 years old could not write two lines wanting to be a novelist okay that's oh, uh, he didn't say it but it sounded like that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but what we do and that is something that i've always done with people children as well as adults while they spend the time doing the listening is to do the not, not necessarily to draw, to paint, because automatically children have these pictures that it has to be formal and well done. Yes. yes. And, you know, play, uh, play it, uh, with, with a pen, with a pencil. Mm -hmm. And I suggest Robin to do that. And you start with very, very nice little doodles, and then you start putting some watercolor on the doodle. The first ones were not bigger than a stamp. Okay. okay. And one day he gave me one, and, uh, <laughs> and then two months later he gave me another one a little bit bigger. Yes, and you know, yes. we started to investigate oil painting, and uh, and and then then acrylic. And he was keeping me abreast of all this mm -hmm. evolution. He, mm -hmm. Across the street from the restaurant where he was working was a bookstore, and he was going for hours in the bookstore looking at the work of of, of artists mm -hmm. and uh, going back taking these ideas, trying to put them together and okay within a, a few years he stopped being uh, a waiter okay and start becoming an artist having his own show 
selling his own art, uh, doing uh, you know all the things that artists do to make a living, you know, yes. the, uh, uh, season reading cards and, and all mm -hmm. those things. And to these days, still continue to be an artist. And the beauty has been while this confidence, uh, this confidence developed more and more simple, simplified, but stories, mm -hmm. expression of happiness and friendship. Yes. Yes. And then it became bigger and bigger. And my last visit in France, I went to see friends, a uh, lady that mm -hmm. had done a TV program on us yeah. and had interviewed Robin in one of the program. Wow. And she lived in a beautiful place in the Bordeaux area, beautiful okay. place. Okay. And in the, the best room, the best, it was, it's kind of a chateau. I mean, you cannot believe how beautiful it is. Yeah. The best room of the best wall of the living room there is a magnificent, huge robin there. And I was so pleased to oh, see wow. how far he went with his art. Yes, my God. So that's basically, writing has not been his way of channeling his expression, his creativity. It becomes painting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what the program gave him. Yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? That he really found his, how to express himself. How to truly express himself through his art. Yeah. Yes. Amazing. Now, those children you want, uh, we are going to talk to you about mm -hmm. that we mm -hmm. have, uh, uh, that we have uh, worked with. I always prefer to talk about what I would call work in progress. Okay. 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 It's, uh, it's, it's very much artist in me. Artists are only interested in work in progress. As soon as the, the paint is dry, it goes to yeah. the dealer, it goes yeah. somewhere, they yeah. forget about it. Okay. Okay. And in fact, they tell you that what they do now is much better than that. Yeah. <laughs> Which may or may not be right, uh -huh. but that's the way they process and that keeps the creativity going. Okay. Which means that what we have done, and because we have worked in the last two years, we have worked together with Rosalind mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. practically all the cases that we have seen, uh, she's going to be part of, of, of that, yes. uh, that part of the conversation. One, talking about solving problem. As you know, because you have trained with us, you have trained with us mm -hmm. years ago, we always say, and we keep this rule here at the listening center, that we do not help with children less than two years old. Yeah. Well, I'm going to talk, we are going to talk about one that we start helping at one years old. Wow. <laughs> Okay. Breaking the rule, just to yes, yes. <laughs> If anyone can break the rules, it has to be you, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and thanks to that, I can tell you that children like this little one that we have seen react very, very well, not only to program, but to home program. Because, in fact, we broke the rule twice. Is not only gave him, we gave him the program at one year old, but we gave him a home program. It was much easier yes. for mom to go and walk around with the stroller with the stroller Brilliant. as soon as he was on the move he's calm, he's calm as we know okay the, the, the vestibular the movement yes. and because he's calm he, he, he accepts the headphones great, great. and he was doing his program going around the city uh, we started him at one years old by his two and a half okay. uh, what do we what do we have first of all is a, is a severe developmental, global developmental delay with a strong physical base, mm -hmm. microcephaly and delayed gyration of the cortex, which means that, you know, the, the folds mm -hmm. between the cortex are not as folded as it should be. Okay. And that's not a, usually it's not a very good prognosis. Mm -hmm. uh, also, he has a condition called FEVR, which is a retinal condition which makes him basically blind uh, not totally he mm -hmm. might see some color and shape but certainly not more than that okay, okay? okay. Which means that here we have a child with a global developmental delay and blindness mm -hmm. and that is why in fact one of the reasons we start so early you say well well the other reason we started early is that while we had a child who was like a log mm -hmm. very very mm -hmm. stiff Mm -hmm. But out of that log, we had a joyful smile, uh, a wanting to connect. You could see the child trying to absorb. Give it, give it, give it, give it, give it. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are going to give it to you. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And, and, and it worked very well. Mom sent us uh, little recordings mm -hmm. of, uh, of his interaction. Uh, mm -hmm. First of all, now he walks. Okay, he has a little uh, back or something. I, within to, a year, really. Within a year. When we met him, he was laying on his back. He couldn't even roll over. Wow. Yeah, we met him last, uh, last April, and uh, now he's basically two years old, a little bit more than two and a half years old. Okay. And yeah, he's walking. He is uh, full of life. Full of life. Oh, wow. uh, SPN, you know, looking at, I bet not looking too much because of his eyes. Yeah. But knowing how to play, mom, the little, mm -hmm. you know, the little job. Directions. The yes, yeah, that's right. Great. Yeah. yeah, and this laugh, like. <laughs> no, this big laugh comes out. <laughs> and actually, he just started a preschool this year, so that was a really big step yeah. for him and for mom. Mom was very, very worried about him. Yeah. You know, with all this. Oh, naturally. Children. And it went very, very well. And we reviewed just a, just a week ago. A last recording of their interaction. Mm -hmm. uh, first, the recording was uh, no, the previous one, not the first, but the previous one she had sent us in September, which means yeah. we had a kind of a two readings, September and late November. Okay. In September, you could hear mom prompting and him repeating quite okay. nicely, okay. With, yeah, okay, with articulation issue and so on, but mm -hmm. it was really my first in second. Now, second recording is him first. Oh. And mom, Sigal, <laughs> repeating what he's saying and, and shaping it up in, yeah. in a more formal way. Wow. Uh, we see that, but but the, what does that mean? It's been spontaneity, yeah. uh, not having to echo, not having to repeat. It's a very big step, in, as you know, in the development of language. Absolutely. And so when he came to you originally, so he was like a log. So from a motor point of view, he was doing very little. And very from little. From a speech point of view, what was he doing? Uh, ba, 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 ba. And gaga. Gaga. Yeah. Ba, 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 gaga. Okay. And interaction wise, was he interacting? With a, he was interacting through smile, through yes. facial mimicry, but not physically because yes. he was like a log. He was prisoner of his body. And how many times we see that? Yeah, no, 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 that's, yeah, okay, wow. And we now... A, what, what's interesting for me, and that is can generalize to many, many, many children we see of any age, is that what we were presented with was a very bleak prognosis. As soon as a child came into the room, even if it looked like a log and so on, which means it was really the reflection of the diagnosis, yes. we saw a child joyful, wanting to communicate. This is, this is what you have to take and go. Yeah, absolutely. Whatever the problematic is, that is your anchor. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is what very often, we, we very often talk with Rosalind and with Morana about this, mm -hmm. is that when we see a child on paper, is is a write-off. Right, right yeah. As soon as they come into the room, okay, let's start working. Yes, 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 yeah. No, and I say that to parents all the time because, you know, when you receive the neurological report in advance of the child coming in or you're reading through the questionnaire, sometimes you think, oh my golly, there's so much going on. How is this child going to come into the room or whether the assessment is via Zoom or face to face? And invariably, when they come in, you can see that there's so much more there. You, yeah. can, you can see the child that's really there. And that is a problem of diagnosis, is yes. that they kind of shade, put a big, cast a big shadow to what's important. Absolutely. Life. Absolutely. The person. The person. Yes. The person. Yes. Oh, yeah. No, no, it's so true. And you know, I suppose what always strikes me as well is when parents say, which uh, totally understandably, they say, where is my child at at the moment? And I say, well, you know, he's doing this and this and, you know. But I said, what's more important is where could your child be at? What's your child's true potential if we can really tap into it? And that's where the sound therapy can really help. Yeah. 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 And, and sometimes the sound therapy do not do very much, you know, from the point of view of the therapist. Yes. Uh, yeah. and, and, and you have extraordinary results. Why is that? Yeah. Well, I, I, I have this visualization of being disabled and being able. 
sometimes, and I see it as my nose is below the water, that makes me that I cannot breathe, I'm disabled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or my nose is just above the water, mm -hmm. and I can breathe, yes. that enables me. Yes. Now, of course, sometimes there is a lot of water, which mm -hmm. means that we need to work, 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 work to bring yes. the level of ability to come up and start expressing itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's not very much below the surface. Yeah. And that's, for me, it's a, a way to explain why some children move so fast. Yeah. perhaps compared to others mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's a little bit difficult sometimes to say who is going to be who well well how much water on, on top of the nose <laughs> absolutely no no it's so true isn't it and as you say sometimes it's hard to say who's the child who's going to move quickly yes yes children can present very similarly sometimes yes and it's, like, it's just when you start working with them that you start to see oh my golly he took off she took off he's got he's changing but it's moving a little bit more slowly so just mm -hmm. yeah 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 but i love that analogy paul you know because i think often for parents a child can look like they have so much difficulty and then when you start working with them things can change quickly and you start to see all this lovely potential mm -hmm. the child who's truly there that's right well let, yeah. let's talk about one that we yes. the, the next one who is on our list is a two and a half okay uh the child was not even in the country when the parents contacted us, uh, they had adopted him, mm -hmm. but because of COVID, they could not go and get him in the country of adoption. Okay. But they wanted to have everything prepared when they go and back, can you do something? Uh, his first problematic was uh, independent, uh, no diagnosis here, mm -hmm. but the fact that we had a child who was supposed to be uh, adopted at a little bit less than two, but mm -hmm. we have to postpone the adoption by six months. As you know, six months is extremely important in language development. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a child who comes from an orphanage way there in Eastern mm -hmm. Europe mm -hmm. to a home mm -hmm. with no knowledge of English whatsoever. Okay. Wow. And the parent wanted to know what can we do mm -hmm. language-wise, but more I, I, as a communicator, how are we going to communicate with this child mm -hmm. in such a completely new environment? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they, we, we, we say, okay, give him a couple of months when he arrives in order for us to have a benchmark, yeah. in order to see if there is anything in his more than just a, a language barrier. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and, and then we saw him. And we did something that also we broke the rule a little bit in the work of, of the you lift. are breaking a lot of rules over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the way things move forward. <laughs> what did they say? Rules are made to be broken. <laughs> yeah, that's right, exactly. <laughs> if we go through alternative fields, it's because we are not too cozy with the rules. <laughs> exactly. No problem with the rules to begin with. <laughs> We broke the rule by taking the voice of the mother, recording the voice of the mother, telling stories of so the adoptive mother, mm -hmm. yes. and using it yeah. in order to give the, what, the, the prosody, the music of the voice, the music of the language through the voice of the mother. Mm -hmm. Which means that we were catching you know, two birds with the same stone. Yes. We were kind of working on a better bonding with this new lady who is becoming the mother mm -hmm. and in the same time working the English language, the music of the language, the flow of language. Because really mm -hmm. learning a language is not learning letters. Mm -hmm. This is an adult way of doing it. A yes. child learns the dance of it, yes. the movement of it, the yes. flow of it. And yes. we have to give that to a little two and a half. One thing that he had, and that's part of his bringing in a in a in a in a in an orphanage mm -hmm. he was very much on the protective mode okay uh, don't touch me yeah uh, the parents uh, go around the, the city with bicycle where they have to put in the helmet to sit him in the little seat and he was screaming his lungs he was so out he was scared he was scared of being constrained yes yes uh, and the first thing which happened when we start the first intensive is that here he was, in fact, I saw them in the street, 
here he was sitting on the back of the same bicycle and putting himself oh. because he wanted to go. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is a good recommendation. It's a, it's, 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 the program worked very well. First, because he is young. Second, mm -hmm. because uh, you, you need something. Mm -hmm. the language is not going to fall mm -hmm. on him. No, and, no. And, and, and I think the listening work can mm -hmm. really help him with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the next one, if you want to continue, is a, is a, is a, is a, is a, is a eight years old coming from very far east, living alone with mom. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw him in three years ago, which means now is three. Uh, we have seen him for three years. Okay. Uh, and we have kind of a. It's nice to have seen children and continue to have the contact. Yeah. The pro, uh, th this was a child, uh, he was uh, eight years old going to 25. Okay. <laughs> uh, he had, a, to, just to, to give you a, and, 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 and the problem is that the 25 got a lot of positive reinforcement. Okay. Very smart, you yeah. know, very, very yeah. smart. And ambitious. And okay. Very smart and ambitious, but non-verbally. Limited, you know, restricted. Exactly. I mean, basically, with a diagnosis of Asperger okay. and ADHD. That's why it come for us. Okay. But he was so smart that he had, when I say positive reinforcement, he wrote a letter to the prime minister of his country to say, you have to do this, you have to do that. And the prime minister wrote him back, <laughs> which means that this is the, which means that talking about reinforcement of the thing that is fine, but let's work on something else. This kid, oh, no. this kid didn't have any friends, didn't, yeah. didn't relate to anybody, uh, but wanted to save the world in his head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Me, me, me. Uh, uh, and what we have from the mother uh, is that the awareness of other, uh, let, me, let me read some of the notes that I've shared. Um, yes, the direct thing is me, me, me. To the awareness of others, which means that all this wanting to help is fantastic. That is, yeah. that is what the therapists see as, you know, as that is what's good. Yes, you know, it's not that he just wants to make money. Mm -hmm. He wants to help people, mm -hmm. and now he is involved in all kind of things, helping the classroom uh, as a support for other kids, accept the help of other people, which is very very new for him. Yes, yeah. uh, basically. And, and, and I have to say, more than the, that, that is something we really pride ourselves of. When you do a sound program, mm -hmm. you also have to accompany with support, counseling, guidance. Yeah. You do that, we need to do that. Mm -hmm. And the class of guidance, and the mother was very open to her guidance, saying, what can we do mm -hmm. to help him? Because she, she, we had all this conversation, getting into his body, getting, mm -hmm. and I say, sport, get him out there, yeah. social sport, yeah. getting with other people. And she mm -hmm. did it, and he went, and he worked. Mm -hmm. she, she also did some things that, I don't know if I had advised her or not, I don't remember that part. Mm -hmm. But she, because of the culture, yeah. She involved him into meditation, okay. okay, and it worked very well for him. Oh, interesting! You know, the positive side just yes. it, it, it worked very, very well for him. But basically, got into his body for doing what he wants. And little by little, you see him becoming a person who is going to be successful, who is going to be helpful in the society, mm -hmm. which means that he's going to use his big potential he has on yes. top of the head and pass it through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can hear parents saying, you know, golly, that sounds amazing for that child. So he looked like he kind of had underlying maybe Asperger's, so difficulty relating with others, maybe difficulty empathizing with others, interacting with others. He had it all up here, as we see with so many children, but that they find it hard to kind of ground all of that and, and make it real. So how long, you know, when did you start to see changes with them? Like when you did the yeah. first program? We, we start seeing changes very fast. Uh, it didn't go very, but, but it, it, these were not the type of changes we start seeing. The yeah. changes we start seeing is a better regulation, yes. uh, uh, more uh, communicative, more able, less yeah. rigid, more able to 
we see a bit more flexible. Yes. And, and, and mom was very proactive. She saw that right away. She was not this type of person who said, oh, but there is still so much which we haven't seen. Yes, yes. We have been dealing with this balance too. Yes. But, but look at what you see. Yes. See yes. what see what there. And then imagine that it's going to go on. There is, a move, there is a development which has to be taken place. We very often talk about our work is developmental. Yes. We have to go to the layering of development, starting with step one and then two and then three. And that is really this unfolding yeah. that, uh, that has been happening in that mm -hmm. with this mm -hmm. child for three years. Mm -hmm. We're still in contact because he has some boosts from yeah. time to time, which may after the core program of two sessions, okay. so we give him a, I don't, I don't have the, the, mm -hmm. the number, but at least the three boost, uh, mm -hmm. they move very far, which means mm -hmm. that now they're back around mm -hmm. Toronto. But for a long time, we were sending the equipment, they were sending it back, and okay. we had a, an interview with mom on the phone, Lovely. and she was telling us, and, and for us, it was like, oh, she it, it is unfolding. Yes, yes. Yeah, and this is the thing, isn't it? I think that can be confusing for parents sometimes because naturally we all have this idea in our head of what we want and what we think we should see. And and I think obviously from our point of view, we're trying to reframe that and explain we're starting from the bottom up and the inside out. So, you know, things are going to develop and start emerging and it'll build and build and build towards, you know, the child's potential. But it's funny, I, I often say to the parents, and it's so I find it so true with the lift. For me, I trained in the lift many years ago with you, Paul, and Marana. And for me, working with the lift with children is like watching the brain unfold. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah. oh, so that's how the brain works. Yeah. So that's, you know, it, it, like, you know, I often say this to parents, I'll never forget when I started using the lift first, I had three little ones in a group in clinic and they hadn't a sound between the three of them. They had not one single sound, nothing. They ranged in age from about four and a half to six and a half. The lift started, they became more regulated. Then one of the little ones started to do this thing with his mouth. Mm -hmm. Then the second little one started doing the same thing. And over a period of about three days, they were all the same on different programs, but at the same stage in terms of days, if you want of the lift, within three days, they were all doing this thing. Like, oh my god what are they doing and if one if only one had been doing it i'd have said okay three were doing it. And i thought oh genie <laughs> you know what's going to happen next then the first child who had started doing that right started to make sounds mm. then the second little one started to make sounds then the first little one started to make words then the third little one started to make sounds and it built so that by the end of the 30-day program they were all not only making sounds, the child who had changed first was actually putting words together now, as well as everything else that had changed. The second child who had started to change second, I think was using single words by the end of the program. And the third child was making a whole variety of sounds. But what it showed me was, okay, so this is how the brain works. First, we've got to get the information from the brain to the articulators that you've got to do something. Something's got to start moving here. Then the voice came in, then the sound started to build from there. And I've seen that in not just speech, but comprehension, expressive language, putting words together, in terms of interaction, engagement, in terms of the development of play, um, right across the board. And so for me, I always say to parents, the lift has taught me how the brain truly works. How the brain develops. How, develop. how it develops, yes. step by step. Yeah. One thing builds up layers. One layer, the foundation goes in, then the next layer develops, the next layer, the next layer, until the child reaches their own potential, whatever that is. Yeah. You know, so yeah, no, God, it's amazing. Yeah, and the, the two last cases we want to yeah. talk about, the two last uh, we want to talk about, a, a very good illustration of that. Okay. Uh, he's 44 years old, okay. very mature, like okay. talking like a 16 years old, really. Uh, Okay. Yeah, that you have an adult lady in front of you, you were listening to her 16 years old, you know, kind of designing her life, yeah. not, having, not having really listened to herself all these years, yeah. all the things she received, 
which meant that she had not accomplished very much, mm -hmm. but having this big, huge, humongous mm -hmm. dream, mm -hmm. which was to, because she wanted to help, that's yes. very important. That yes. is what we pulled out of what we sh mm -hmm. she, wanted to, she was saying, because she wanted to help and help children. Like her. Like, like her. Yeah. She wanted to be a pediatric neurologist. Okay. Imagine 44 years old, dyscalculic, meaning that she was a unable to deal with numbers and you know, very, very low level. We had all the tests and so on to show that. Mm -hmm. so, uh, basically, uh, not knowing anything of chemistry and biology, yeah. what preparing herself to go to college in order to go to medical school, mm -hmm. 44 years old. Mm -hmm. that she had this old this dream, yeah. but it was built on quicksand. Yes. It was not grounded, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we, 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 we let her keep going with her dream, mm -hmm, we just mm -hmm. gave her the program, supported her, she loved it, yeah. she found a lot of breakthrough and so on, she, yeah. she was really... She's quite an artist in that. Yes, very, very, and, and very accurate, yeah. you know, talking about your brain, um, mm -hmm. she was really very accurate about what's happening, mm -hmm. but what we saw, over the months, because we mm -hmm. started helping her about less than eight, mm -hmm. nine months now. In fact, she did everything through a home program because of COVID, mm -hmm. uh, and she lives far out in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we saw her coming to a sense, and perhaps you could talk about class conversation. After that. Yes, so she has completed a couple of boosts now. And she sends us a little update. First, she sent an update a couple of months ago That's saying, right. you know, I'm thinking about stopping my, you know, I'm pursuing this, these pre-med courses. I, I'm thinking I just need to stop. And I'm going to focus on this book that I've been writing about my journey. Okay. okay. Wonderful. Okay. Yeah. We hear from her now, a few weeks ago. <laughs> she yes. says, okay, I have figured out what I'm going to do with my life. I am going to become a dysgraphia specialist. So I can help children in the elementary school system with problems just like I had. And the training is it's very practical for where she's at in her life. She has a plan. She actually even hired a, a coach. Yes. To, yes. Uh, um, what did she call this coach? An ADHD coach or? Yeah. Oh, um, executive functioning coach. Yes, yes. An organizer. Yeah. Keep her, keep her on track. Keep her on track. Okay, okay. Because she needs that. She needs that. The program gave us a grounding yeah. and she needs someone on a day-to-day -to, -day to give us a direction. Yes. And now with the grounding, she becomes exactly who she is at this time of her life mm -hmm. with a goal, which is still, and that is what on the counseling side we have emphasized every time we saw her, talked to her, Zoom her, is you want to help. You want to have, keep in mind, this is your goal. Everything else is means to reach that goal. Mm -hmm. uh, and now she has found a means to reach that goal, which is reasonable, yes. which is in her senses. Yes. Which makes sense. Yes. Yeah. And it's real for her now. That's yeah. right. Which yeah. is she's, not, she's going to stop wasting her life looking, uh, you know, shooting at working, stars. Working. Yes. She was working hourlessly every day with tutors and this and that and yes. not getting anywhere J yes. just listening to her telling us what the time schedule was was making us exhausted yeah. and even from an emotional point of view you know how do i put it having all those dreams which is fantastic but as you say her ultimate goal really was to help people and you helped her to reframe that to understand it she got the clarity from the lift it grounded her as you say she got the clarity and all the time it was like we had a discussion before about this you were kind of guiding her towards you want to help people this is what that's you right. really want to do how can you do that in a way that's right for you mm -hmm. and you know that's because we're talking about an adult here yeah. perhaps i'm going to add something because yes. it's very often in our conversation with rosie we come from her background as the, the background of Rosalind. I'm an expressive arts therapist. Okay. 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 She's basically finding art and expressive art as a mean of psychotherapy. Okay. I have in my past uh, been very interested in the psychotherapy yes. process 
because I see, you know, I've worked, we don't talk too many or too, too much of it, but mm -hmm. a lot of my work has been with adolescents and adults. Yeah. And I see the listening as a way to, uh, to, 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 to help people to move the different steps necessary that you go, uh, the, 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 the solving the problem that you are going to solve with a therapist. I mean, that it brings the material to the session of psychotherapy. Mm -hmm. uh, I knew a, a famous psychoanalyst, Jungian psychoanalyst, who did the program and who became some kind of a mentor of mine when I was still in France. He was saying that uh, it, the, the listening work precipitates catharsis. That was his way of, you know, psychoanalytic way of saying what it does. Mm -hmm. and, and it's very well said. And in that case, we, you know, she wanted to help. We didn't tell that. She said that. And we were just like, like the midwife, listening to her, you know, giving a little bit of a, reminding her that it's health that she's talking about and not neurologist or neuro. You know, it, it, yeah, it is neuro, but it is for helping. Mm -hmm. Perhaps another way of looking at it. Then go back and do some listening, come back, and little by little, as we explained it. The next one I want to talk about quickly because, uh, because it takes a long time, is a child in autistic spectrum okay. uh, who, came, uh, who came two years ago, ASD and dyspraxia, okay. couldn't talk uh, too much, mm -hmm. with years and years and years of ABA, you know, the, the, the therapy, yeah. uh, which didn't work very well for him. In fact, it's, I think I would say he outsmart the ABA therapy, like many kids in the spectrum do, yes. they sit through it yeah. and then the <laughs> they play with it. Yes. Before we continue, I would like to uh, invite Morana to come in okay, uh, great. Uh, to the meeting. Morana is a co-director of the center. And she has been working for 25 years now yeah. at the listening center, <laughs> which means that she has been involved since the very, very beginning of the okay. week. It was 1998, 1999, and since she has been the main person, the main contact with all the practitioners who are doing the leave for teaching, for supervision, and uh, what you see here right now is a, is a core of the clinical staff of, of the listening center. We work together all the time, yeah. and in fact, COVID has forced us to work even more together uh, because everything we have done since March is through Zoom and through the lift, yes. which is new for us. Huh? The way the listening center operates, has been operating all these years, is doing a program in center. Mm -hmm. And then, because we need extended programs in many situations, mm -hmm. uh, offer uh, the possibility of home program for boost, which mm -hmm. means for ongoing support. Mm -hmm. Now, since COVID, we have started, we are working very much like you do. Mm -hmm. uh, we, are, we start, uh, we do the initial assessment uh, by Zoom, or some local people come to see us, but it's, it's more the exception. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, we have learned a lot uh, about using uh, the home program from beginning to hand, mm -hmm. the, and, and what for us, the main, the, the main purpose is to maintain the efficiency. Yes. And I have to say, we, we can say that after eight, nine months of doing it that way, we are extremely pleasant, pleasantly surprised by how good it works. Mm -hmm. As long as it is well supervised, and that is a supervision. We do a lot of work of support, mm -hmm. first of all, to explain the lift. We have a Zoom meeting. Mm -hmm. to explain the lift and to explain the programs that we are going to recommend and why this program people know how to contact us anytime mm -hmm. and and then following during following the program we have zoom meetings uh, which replace the, the basically the counseling mm -hmm. support mm -hmm. that we provide at the center mm -hmm. what we have learned is that uh, much more people than I thought, a greater proportion of people than I originally thought can benefit from the program. Mm -hmm. However, 
it is very important in order to have a successful program to have some kind of structure in the house yes. in order to support the child in the house. Yes. Because the, the worst which can happen to a program which is dependent of sound stimulation coming through headphones from a piece of equipment mm -hmm. is that this chain doesn't work. Yes. If it doesn't work, you are not going to get the result. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes you don't know that it doesn't work because the child stopped the equipment yes. or yes. removed the headphones because everybody is busy oh, wow. or because the TV is blasting and it's you know what he's receiving in the ears is lost in the you know, improvisation, <laughs> noise, yeah. uh, all those things are very important. Uh, you have to really create a, a dedicated space, a dedicated time yeah. uh, in order to make it worthwhile. Absolutely. And the environment, as you say, has to be so right. Now, I know, Marana, you don't have a lot of time today because I think you have to go to a family in a few minutes. But, you know, I mean, just as Paul said there, it was yourself and Paul who trained me so many years ago. And the ongoing support that I've received, my God, from you, Marana, and from Paul, but you've been doing really, on your end of things, has been just phenomenal. I mean, you know, and, and still to this day, we still talk about different kids and what do you think you'd do? What, you know, what have you seen works best? What, you know, and uh, no, it's just been, it's just been phenomenal. You've been fantastic. Um, and I know you've supported so many families and children, you know, and, and therapists. So yeah, no, so thank you so much. We've talked so much about the lift, Moran, and, and, you know, the different kids that we, children and adults that, you know, you've used it with and we've used it with over the years and all the great, I suppose, things that we've seen. Is there anything that you'd like to add and I know you don't know everything that we've spoken about now. I just want to add on to what Paul has said. Yeah. You know, for yeah. us, it's been a transition. Yes. The lift used to be an extension of our yes. work center. Yes. Yeah. So in a way, we're experiencing a little bit of what you've seen in your practice yes. at the same time, right? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and I think that your work has been a little bit of an extension of our teamwork. Yes. Yeah, exactly. yeah, you know, and we learn from your experience yeah, as yes, well. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yes. Yeah. You have inspired us. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, you know, and that, that works the other way. And, and that's the beauty of it, isn't it? I think, you know, that openness to sharing. Yes. our experience and our knowledge and and that's it's all for the the greater good really that the kids are are just making such great progress you know um yeah no i know i i, I agree with yeah i know it's been great um so I know, look at Marana, I know you need to go in a couple of minutes. And so I suppose, unfortunately, we're probably going to have to bring our chat to an end. Um, I think it's, you know, I think so many families say to me about, you know, uh, the lift program and listening therapy, you know, how is it, how is it going to help their child? How can it help their child? And I think once they have the opportunity to talk to us and to see what can happen see what the potential is and we spoke earlier about seeing the child that's truly there behind the difficulty you know the the the, the true child that's really there or the adult that mm -hmm. really wants to be seen and heard i think that's you know that's such a big part of what we do and i think for me the over many years now uh, and thanks to yourselves the lift has helped so many children so many children and adults that you've worked with to really achieve their true potential to really experience life in a different way in a better way you know so it's no i want to thank you so much and and i know the parents are, are so excited about hearing more from yourselves and um yeah so if people want to find out more they can contact obviously either ourselves here or they can contact yourselves at the listening center.com yeah and i know paul look at you you're you have an amazing book out there um listening with the you. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, i don't think mine's as amazing as yours but um you know when listening comes alive and that's i mean when i read that first i mean i have to say you know it really because it it talks about listening in such a you know when we think about listening often as speech therapists it's it's a one-liner in a report rather than it's nearly the whole, it should be the whole thing because that's where so much of it starts, you know. So, yeah, look, thank you so, so much to you all. And I'm 
really excited to share this with parents and let's see what questions come so we'll probably be contacting you with questions that the parents are sending in and i'm looking forward to talking to you again soon so yeah. <laughs> thank you and happy christmas to you all thank you very much to say to you yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and looking forward to talking to you in, in 2021 when we're moving ahead and it'll be a different world and yeah, yeah, things will have changed again. So thank you so, so much and we'll talk to you soon. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.